Divine Truth Spirit Assistance Discussions Giving assistance to people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. This is part two of the Spirit Assistance Discussion Questions from Spirits about Forgiveness and Repentance during which Mary channels spirits who have been present during her discussions with Jesus about God's laws of forgiveness and repentance, who came to Mary during her preparation of a personal feedback discussion for a woman from the USA asking a series of questions via email on the subject. The session was recorded on the 20th of June 2018 from 2 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Introduction to a six fear spirit group. Hello. G'day, how are you? What, what was your name? Ferdinand. Ferdinand, and you're a spokesman for a group, I gather? Yes. Yeah. There's a number of us here who have some questions for you yeah. surrounding repentance. Repentance, yeah. And Ferdinand, um, you're all been in the sixth fear for various periods of time? Yes. What's the longest period of time further? Uh, 20 years, so... So fairly recent visitors yes. to the sixth fear? Yes, yeah. all of us. Yeah, good day. It's a and, new environment. Yeah, lovely environment, huh? And ha uh, how many are in your group? Uh, 10,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lot, lots of friends? Yes. <laughs> well, we are a gathering, I suppose, with yeah. a common purpose. Yeah. Not necessarily all personal it's friends. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, the purpose of the gathering has been? Well, to pose these questions to you about repentance. Yes. Yep. So we have been observing some of your discussions. Yes. How long for? <laughs> uh, that also varies. <laughs> yeah. Yep. For myself, uh, far more recently than some of the others, yeah, yeah. but it has piqued a lot of my interest yeah. and so I would like to ask about it. Sure, yes. sure. So I should say that uh, all of us here have observed in one way or another the discussions that you have had about forgiveness and repentance. Mm -hmm. The query we have is surrounding whether or not it is possible for a person to have engaged with repentance um, and believe themselves to have repented fully, uh, to, re to have removed this sin from themselves, mm -hmm. when from God's perspective that is not the case, mm. or from the law's perspective that is not the case. Well, to answer that question first, obviously in the past, in your progression, you would know there were times where you tried to convince yourself that a certain, a certain uh, bit of progress had been made when it, after a while it became evident that it hadn't. Y certainly, and mm. hence the questions. Yes, yeah. Mm. So, so just the logic of that particular analysis of your past experience would tend to suggest that it is possible to almost fool yourself into believing that it has ha happened, isn't it? Yes, so I suppose yeah. the secondary question yeah. is really then how does one assess, correctly assess whether or not repentance has taken place, either within oneself or within another? Well, it, it depends on uh, how you measure it, as you know. So, so for example, if we, if we look at your past experience up to the sixth sphere, we can see that um, when, you made, when you did make substantial, uh, meaningful improvements in your condition, there was a substantial and meaningful improvement in your life circumstances. Yes. So the surroundings changed, your surroundings changed, your experiences changed, your friendships changed, and so forth. Yes. So, so it, it obviously became quite clear to you then that you'd made some, some kind of change. And usually at times, uh, because of the change being so instant after you've dealt with something emotionally, mm. you can see the linkage between the, the thing you, you dealt with emotionally and the change that was made. So you could see what was holding you back from that change. Yes. But a lot of that happens after the effect, of course. So, so mm -hmm. you know, before the fact, you don't know those particular things. And that's the difficulty, isn't it? Before the fact, it's difficult to know. And a lot of times you need help from other people to show you what 
needs to be changed and then you go ahead and make the changes and then you realize how much that previous condition was impeding your change mm -hmm. and how much that previous condition involves certain shall we call them sins against God's laws? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's how you see it, but sin against the law of the universe, if you like, mm -hmm. that, that, allow, that allow, once you corrected that particular sin, if you like, or disharmony with the law, mm -hmm. uh, you had the instant reflection of that change. So that's one way to measure your change, mm -hmm. to, to measure to see whether you've completed a process. The, the problem when you get to the sixth dimension is interesting, though, because... You've completed a lot of changes relating to your experiences with people. So in other words, a lot of the, what you've gone through in terms of refining your condition of love is refining the, the, in, how you've treated people unethically or immorally. And then you've reached the condition where you've treated them better and you know you feel motivated to treat them better, you treat them better, and that has risen or... or drawn up your own condition to a new place and and that's how many of you would have arrived in the sixth sphere mm. through this constant cycle of change yes but now that you've reached the sixth sphere it becomes quite plain because of the camaraderie and the friendship and fellowship that you feel between all of your brothers and sisters it it, it becomes quite plain that that you've probably dealt with a lot of that right because otherwise you wouldn't be in such an agreeable mm. condition of uh, friendship with mm. people, right? So then how do you, uh, and, and do you all believe that it's possible to reach a seventh sphere? I do, yes. yes. Many of us do. Yes, okay. Yes. So, and many of you know that a seventh sphere, you've heard from others that a seventh sphere exists. Yes. Yes, okay. So, so obviously to go from the sixth sphere to the seventh sphere, requires some kind of change that you're yet to become aware of but that obviously could be made and just like every other change you've ever made yes and that has to be related to this issue of repentance because all of the other changes you've made have basically been related to either repentance or forgiveness in some way in other words they've been related to working your way through what you've done to somebody else or working your way through what other people have done to you Mm. Yeah. But the tra transition between the sixth and seventh sphere, obviously the fact that you, there's no more people left to deal with any problem with, there's got to be a problem that exists that is not related to people. Well, could I clarify? Yes, uh, yes, okay, fine. All of that's fine. Mm. Um, uh, my question, our questions are not really self-interested in the way that perhaps you're thinking we, we're not yes we understand what you're saying about further progression and that is a desire of ours and mm -hmm. but we still aren't clear given your definition of repentance really when one could um how could one explain a, that repentance has occurred to another person how could one understand it I understand you're saying that the significant change in external circumstances in the spirit world is, a, is an indicator. But mm -hmm. for some of us, those changes happened in some cases gradually or mm -hmm. in large steps and then in seemingly it went gradually again. Mm -hmm. And so at what point does re can we say, I have repented for everything, A, B or C, any single thing? Mm. Uh, how does one assess that? Well, as I'm getting to in my answer, because I haven't really answered the question yet, um, obviously, but the reason why I gave all that background is because I wanted to present to you the next stage of development, which is, which is all about working through this issue of who determines or who, the laws of the universe, which you've probably thought about them as the laws of the universe rather than God's laws at this point. Is that true? Yes, yep. although I'm not opposed to the idea of God. I'm, yep. as, as I've said, I'm a recent arrival here. Yep. And uh, yes, while most of my leanings are in that direction, yep. I'm not opposed to many of the things that you say. Yep. So, and are you opposed to the concept of a personal relationship with God? I would say I'm not unopposed, but I, I'm... <clears throat> 
Did you see recently I had a conversation with a group of spirits? Uh, his name, uh, the group was led by a man called Sebastian. Mm. Yeah. Did you? Yes, and this had an impact upon me. Mm. Mm. And you, you understand the logic that I talked about with Sebastian about yes. repentance in the sixth sphere. Yes. Yeah. So, so if we look at the situation, the, the real issue then becomes, well, what do I need to repent to, for to reach the seventh sphere? If there is such a thing I need to repent for anything, what is it? Is it that's the real question? No, that's not my no? question. What's no. your question? My question is how could one explain to another person or how does one correctly assess if somebody has repented towards me or I have repented towards them or, or about a general issue, a single issue? What is the definition? Well, my, uh, my belief how is... How does one assess it? My belief is that aside from your personal circumstances, without involving God in the situation, you're not going to be able to assess it. Hmm. So you are saying, though, that I have repented about things. You have, because otherwise you would never have reached the sixth dimension. Without God's involvement. That's right. Mm. So you would never have gotten into your current condition without going through a process of repentance and forgiveness at some level. But you just haven't involved God in the process mm. at any time. Mm. And therefore, you don't yet understand that some of the things you've already repented for only God can really fix. Only God's laws can really fix. Right? Mm. But also, there's things that are specifically being done in your relationship between you and God that are not fixed. If they were fixed, you would already be in the seventh sphere. They just haven't been fixed yet. Yes, and I'm not opposed to that. That's right. And what I'm getting at is that the, the, the big issue here, I feel, is the issue of the conscience. You've heard me speak about the conscience. Mm. The beauty of the conscience is that God has, the has inbuilt into the soul the mechanism of allowing you to hear from God about what you have fixed and what you haven't fixed. In other words, the person who constructed the universal laws is able to personally tell you when the process of repentance is complete. And that's when you'll know it's complete. I see. So only through that mechanism can one correctly assess such a thing. That's right. It's not a math. I mean, I understand there is maths. There, there must be a mathematical oh, way of, of knowing. Of course. But that's not something that you can You share. won't even understand the maths without God's help, actually. Mm. So, so the maths are too complicated for a six fear spirit to understand. Mm. So, so this is another part of the problem is that as a six fear spirit, there's a tendency to want to involve yourself in the mass and the physics of the discovery. But the problem is your level of understanding of the, of the mass and the physics requires certain functionings of the soul that are only opened by the inflow of God's love into the soul. And so therefore it's sort of like a catch 22. You can never resolve the mass because you haven't got the understanding to resolve the mass because the mechanism that gives you the understanding you're preventing from entering you. Does that I, make sense? Yes, I understand. So, so yes, you're right. There is the mass mathematical reasons why all of this occurs, but you're not really going to understand all the mathematical reasons because you've yet to connect to the source of the, of, of the way to open up the soul, it, it, to open up the soul's development enough to understand the mass. So it, this is the problem of not having the relationship with God is it prevents us from fully understanding everything. And, and as you know, in the past, there's been times when you've studied something and, and you feel, as I said to the six fear group uh, so with Sebastian's group, you feel a completion to a process. And then in the six fear, there's times when you, you try to investigate something fully, but, but it's like there's a lot of unknowable things. Mm. There's a lot of things you can't seem to know. And, and, and it's not because God doesn't want to sh or the or let's say the universe doesn't want to share it with you. It's because there's a blockage inside of oneself, inside of the soul that prevents the knowledge. Yes. Yeah. And that's where the limitations of the sixth dimension start to impose themselves upon each individual who lives there. Mm. So... We have this option then of um, experimenting with the conscience. 
Yes, yeah, so, uh, two things. I feel experimenting with the mechanism of the conscience, which is the inbuilt mechanism that God has to share truth with you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to experiment with the flow of love between you and God. So yes. at this stage, while you have a uh, what I'd classify as an intellectual concept of God or a potential one, there hasn't been a personal uh, experience with that God where you can feel you t the two of you in communication with each other. Mm. And, and without that experience, it's going to be very, very difficult to understand what can be shared with you. Mm. Does that make sense? It makes yeah. sense in principle, yeah. yes. So, so the basic principle uh, from, a, from a scientific perspective is that we need a substance from God to understand how, with, how not having a relationship with God has damaged us. Mm. <laughs> Does that make sense? And, and from a scientific perspective, while there are mathematical and physical and physics-based formulas that can govern the operation of that, it's better to understand it from an emotional perspective because it's much simpler for mm. a start. And, and the mathematics will come to you after you've gone through the emotion of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your help. <coughs> uh, presumably the conscience and that same mechanism you speak of can help us assess if somebody else has uh, completely repented on an issue also? Correct. When you, you, will, uh, you will get to the stage you will find if you go through this process. So let's call the first mechanism the mechanism of the conscience interacting with God's truth. But that's a personal relationship with God's truth. And the second mechanism is the mechanism that I called from the Holy Spirit, which is where the Holy Spirit can connect to you as a conduit for God's love. Those two mechanisms are the mechanisms via which God has to share truth with you and share love with you. In other words, the mechanisms that God has to establish a personal relationship with you. Mm. Unless those two mechanisms are engaged, you will not know when you've completed a process. And it's highly unlikely to complete a process because those particular mechanisms open up portions of the soul which allow further development. So it's highly unlikely to complete a process until you've opened up those mechanisms. But the other thing is once you do open up those mechanisms, you can see the other people who have also opened up those mechanisms mm. much more clearly. See, at the moment when people from the seventh or, or, or higher spheres visit you, it's very difficult for you, given the laws that govern their colour and, their, and their, you know, their presence, it's very difficult for you to assess how different they are to you. You will notice some differences, such as their emotion, passionate emotional uh, feelings, and particularly their passionate emotional feelings about God, but also their passionate emotional feelings about humanity. You'll notice those things, but you'll just see them as personality traits. You won't see them as mechanisms of the soul that have been opened up through the inflow of God's love. Mm. And it's only when you go through the personal experience that you feel the difference. Uh, yes, okay, mm. but... It doesn't answer my question for everyone who is below that seventh sphere. Well, the reality they... is we can, actually, we can actually receive God's love in the first sphere. We don't have to be in the sixth sphere to receive God's love. Yeah. And so any person who has received God's love in the first sphere also will notice the same mechanisms in place and therefore notice whether a person has truly dealt with something emotionally or not. Okay. So, so the mechanism applies wherever you are in the spirit world. It, it, is, it is not a respecter of your condition, mm -hmm. it's a respecter of your desire. So it's all about the passion of your desire. And, and so you can see straight away that there is no real limit to understanding it, it, it no matter, as lo but the only, uh, the only limit really is this limitation of the relationship. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't engage the relationship, then you will not know and it, you will have to personally assess through experience, which is what you've done up to now. Yes. So what you've done up to now is you've known that you've dealt with certain things because of the changes in your condition and the changes in your relationships and the changes in your life. A person who's receiving God's love doesn't need to see changes in their condition or their life. They will feel them. They don't need to see them because they've got God telling them. Mm. You've made a change. Here's, and, here's how it fe and here's how it feels. They, they're sensitive to their feelings. Here's how it feels, this change. This is why you're in this f new feeling state.
Okay. Make sense? Yes. And that's okay. capable at any condition. So there is a way to know when you and everyone else around you has fully repented. And there is a way to know when you've repented for individual things. But one way is through the personal, you could say the self-reliant process of examining the circumstances of the individual in the spirit world. Of course, that's much harder on earth because as you know, on earth, there's many people in dark condition who have a seemingly nice surroundings, right? Yes. But in the spirit world, it's very different. But, but that way is a sort of a personal assessment way through circumstance. Whereas this second assessment is really God's assessment. And God can more rapidly tell you whether you dealt with something or haven't dealt with something than you can do it through your own personal experience. So I'd much rather have someone tell me, oh, not yet. someone I can trust, you know, God, not someone who's just a person or a man telling me, but someone who actually knows telling me, no, it's not dealt with yet. Mm. And then I know it's not dealt with yet, <laughs> you know, and that makes my life simple. And I, I just, uh, what do I need to do with it? And he would tell me that too. <laughs> And can you receive that same information about somebody else? Certainly you can, but you have to be firstly open to receiving it about yourself, yes. which, which is actually a law, which you would have already discovered. You have to be firstly open to receiving truth about yourself before you can receive truth about another. Yes. Yeah. And is it possible to mistakenly believe that a process of forgiveness is complete when it is not? Not with God's assistance, but it certainly is possible without God's assistance, because as you know, we can at times be self-delusional. <laughs> so, yeah, so particularly before the sixth fear, we're especially delusional. And in the sixth fear, we can still be delusional about our relationship with God. Yeah. In other words, at the moment, you believe that you're not opposed to a relationship with God but there is a reason why you've not already had one. So that must, there must be an opposition within you to the relationship with God that exists somewhere. It's just not something that you're aware of at this point. Okay, thank mm. you. It's my pleasure. The six fear spirits never like your preamble. <laughs> oh, are they? No, no, they get, they get They're very... They're like, I want to answer the question. We already heard that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Answer the question. They are very resistive to the personal application of truth is what I constantly feel when, when mm. we... Because we've been doing that a bit more lately. Yeah. Mm. It's channeling six fear spirits. And, mm. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Yeah, the key is just give them, <laughs> keep giving them more things to think about. <laughs> Sooner or later, their feelings will bother them. <laughs> Yeah. And then hopefully we'll make some progress, you know. But my, my feelings are like, because they're not feeling, it is. it can be sometimes for a feeling person easy to give up on them. But the reality is they still, like, they still would benefit from God's love. So if you can help them in whatever way you can. Yeah, so. yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, like as a medium and as the person speaking to the spirit, your intention and desire can affect the spirits quite a lot. That's what I'm finding. And so it does take some, if I exert some effort on my part to actually uh, kind of, it's weird because it's not conscious, but I feel it in a, like emotionally. It's like to kind of encourage them to stay. Yeah, because I do feel their impatience, but the, the preamble is necessary because otherwise there's no logical conclusion to my argument, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so and, and I, of course, feel their impatience immensely. Well, they feel that I'm, uh, it's not so much their impatience, the feeling, and they could tell me otherwise, you know, um, what was his name again? It was... Uh, uh, Fernando, I Fernando. Think, yeah. Fernando could tell me otherwise, but the feeling I got from Fernando was a feeling of... Uh, firstly, impatience with me about my preamble, but he doesn't realise the impatience is actually coming from the feeling that he believes that I have a feeling that I'm putting him down or, or feeling like he is um, uh, unable to understand. And Yeah, I didn't feel that from him as much as this resistance to what I felt from him. And I, yes, no, what, what I'm what saying I... is the purpose, the cause of his resistance is this underlying feeling that I'm somehow denigrating him through the preamble. Do you understand? He wants me to get to the point without actually explaining, uh, without, estab without establishing a foundation for the point. Yeah, he felt, he felt, 
you just want me to do your do things God's way and I want to still have the personal choice whether or not to do things God's mm, way. Yes. And and so he, he felt And he doesn't realise that that particular emotion yeah. is his resistance to God. Yeah. His particular almost every six fear has an emotion about God going, No damn it, even if there is a God, I wanna they, they think they're gonna lose themselves by connecting to God, basically. Mm. Mm. They they believe that to maintain some level of self-determination, they have to remain disconnected from God, yeah. right? And, it, and it's such a fallacy because actually connecting to God causes more self-determination. Mm. Yeah. But, but that is the underlying emotion preventing his connection with God. Yeah. And, and I know he's back listening to the conversation, but the actual emotion preventing Fernando's connection to God is actually one that he wants to be self-determinate. Now that has to come from some things that have happened in his life where he's been felt like he's being forced into mm. dealing with things that he hasn't wanted to do. Mm. And, and where did that come from? <laughs> it has to have come from some experience. Right? Yeah. God's not going to force him to do it, but God's going to sit back and wait to, yeah. for him to do it. But at the end of the day, and if he doesn't do it, he will never experience the joys of that relationship. And he'll also, it, 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 the sin that's being committed is his belief about God. The belief about God is that God is going to be overbearing and controlling. Yes. That's the underlying belief about God. Yeah. He's not tried the relationship with God because of that belief. Mm. And because he continues to believe that about God, it is a sin against his relationship with God. Because yeah. you're basically implying that God has those motivations and God doesn't. Mm -hmm. right? And because of that particular sin, it's impossible to connect to God. Yeah. So, so, you know, these are, these are very important things to understand. If you want to make progress, you've got to see, actually, my belief about God, that God's going to be this overbearing parent, even if he's nice and kind and he's made my pretty place in the sixth sphere, he's still going to try to force me into doing <laughs> things. And, and I'm resistive to that. Yeah. And is, is actually imputing a motive to God that doesn't exist in God. Yeah. Hence the sin. Yeah. And therefore the misunderstanding. The disconnection. The disconnection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to God from yeah. an emotional perspective. Yeah. 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 Now, now that Fernando's heard that, he's probably happier about the explanation. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. He can come back if he wishes. But <laughs> <laughs> not at least. Yeah. Not yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you about that. Uh, something that I said. I don't know if that's true. What I said about my intention and desire having an impact on the spirits. Certainly, you have an intention and desire to keep them here with us. Yes. Which is very, like, that's very important. Because if they had the feeling from you that you should just leave, yeah. it'd be very, very difficult for them to stay. A sixth fear yeah. spirit is not inclined to forgive a person who wants them to leave <laughs> and still stay. Yeah. A sixth fear spirit would go, no, you want me to leave, so I'll leave. Yeah. And, and so your desire for them to stay is very important and my desire for them to remain in a conversation until we have some kind of resolution of the question mm. is very important because in both cases they'd, they'd prefer to leave. Otherwise. Yes. You, the reason why you at times feel a bit disconnected from a six fear spirit is because your love for them isn't developed and their love for you isn't developed. Yeah. And so you don't see there being any benefit. Do you see? But aside, from a, aside from a, a righteous benefit, do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. There's no personal one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like, yeah, okay. It's something about my, yeah, my love for them is not developed beyond the, their, their projection of their impatience, for example, feels very overbearing to me. And, well, it is overbearing, yeah. but, but. When I'm very tired, I'm just like you just you just um, want to run away then. Yeah. yeah, I'm like guys, I'm hanging in, hang around, hang around, hang yeah. around. It's going to be okay, hang around. But it, it's sort of like it's harder for me to exert that upon them. Yeah, but you can yeah. see with Sebastian's group the change that was made. Absolutely. And so it is worth the, you know, it's worth forgiving them for their it's impatience. It's worth the physical discomfort to do it. Well, yeah. they, it's a forgiveness of their impatience yeah. in the end that needs to be worked through. But, yeah. you know, it's worth f forgiving them for their impatience because at, at the end of the day, you know, you know that the relationship is going to yes. have an improvement if they... Totally. ...respond. You yeah, know. totally. Mm. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. I, I didn't. I don't see any harm in having these kind of discussions and having them on camera still, babe. Yeah. But you know, yeah, it's up to you. I think it's helpful for people who want to develop their mediumship. Yeah. Because they'll have feelings of the similar of a similar nature where they're feeling imposed upon by the spirits that are with them. And well, that's the thing that I don't understand. Like it's obvious for me at times where I'm kind of. Nothing much is happening intellectually, but when there's spirits who have a lot of resistance, um, I often feel more tired afterwards. Mm. Um, but that's because you're, you're... That's what I was going to say. They're I think fighting it's, their emotions and they connect with you fighting yours. Yes. And so naturally you're going to feel tired. tiring. When, yeah. when they're no longer fighting... It's like when we were talking to Sebastian in the first instance, you were very tired after that conversation. Yeah. When we were talking to Sebastian after he broke through, you livened up and like yes. you were really enjoying the conversation yourself then. And that wasn't a difference in my openness to emotion. That was a difference I felt into me. Like I have, I obviously have sadness triggered when other people are resistive. No, it is a, it's about your openness to emotion because you haven't forgiven people who are not open to emotion. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Sort of. Um, a person who's not open to emotion, you you quite readily dismiss. Because you feel they're not ready to have a com proper conversation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel, no, they're here. This is a good time to have a proper conversation. Mm. Do you know what I mean? A different yeah. feeling. Yeah, and I think that's... And I know you've engaged it more, you know, because you feel like it's good for you, but but you still have a feeling yeah. with people who do not engage emotionally mm. that there's not much point in having a conversation. Yeah, mm. or it's something about the resonance with my own resistance to emotion or something, I don't know. I just noticed no, lately... No, see, yeah. the reason why you're resistant to your emotion mostly is because the people around you are resistant to emotion mm. and you don't like it. Mm. So every time somebody comes, a spirit comes around you who's resistant to emotion, you don't like him either, or, he, or <laughs> her either. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's because you you're yet to forgive the people who have been resistive to your emotion. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Whereas makes sense. whereas with my 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 feelings are well, people are resistive to emotion, and I've already forgiven most of the people who've been resistive to mine. Like yeah. pretty much nobody understands my emotions. Yeah. So I've had to forgive pretty much everybody with, mm -hmm. with every interaction before they you know before i've been able to have an interaction with them mm. and so at the end of the day i don't have that same level of resistance to the fact that they are resistive yes yeah yeah mm. i feel there must be some developing desire in me to love them because i notice Certainly. i'm attracting a, i'm i'm attracting and able to connect to a lot more six sphere spirits whereas you know that used to just drive yeah. me Bananas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You used to, you I get, didn't want to. You used to get yeah. frustrated with the intellectual and technical conversation. Yeah, yeah. and the resistance to emotion. That's what yeah. I was. That's what I was getting at when I was saying, I don't know if it's that it takes extra energy to sort of exert a desire, or if I'm just resisting an emotion that I have when there's people. That's what I was. That yeah. was my You're initial. You're resisting question. an emotion that you have, which is I've not yet forgiven those who are resistive to my emotion. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And even yeah. though I don't want them to connect to my emotion when I'm doing mediumship, their very resistance is obviously triggering that sadness And it's also in better me. if they do connect to your emotion, you channel much better then. But that, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's because of, you know, the way you've been hurt is that people have come along and imposed their emotion on you yeah. without even considering your emotion. You know, that's, yeah, that is, that's a that. massive way I've been hurt. I was just relating that to the spirits. So, yes, that is why I always struggle when I get these very imposing spirits, especially ones who want to be cranky with you or, yeah, who want to be cranky with you. I find yeah, it really well, See, that, I didn't distressing. feel them to be cranky with me. They, no. were, in, they were impatient with impatient. me and they felt that I was, there was also a feeling in them that I was pulling them down to a degree by going through a conversation that they already thought they understood. Yeah. And they don't understand it because yeah. otherwise I wouldn't have said it. It was but, very much like um, Stuart and, yeah, Stuart, I think, was like... Yeah, and, and also person. Sebastian initially. Yeah. He was very impatient yeah. with me yeah. as well um, yeah. for the same reasons. Yeah. Because they believe that I'm trying to, working through stuff they've already thought about. They haven't 
felt about it. They've only yeah. thought about it. And even then, they're not capable of think, feeling about it very well because, because they're not open emotionally to the feelings associated with it. And it's only when I started just that second part of the conversation of we just had, which I think should be included a bit about Fernando. Um, you well, know, it's only when I had that that I could feel Fernando go, ah, oh, you know, yeah. sort of like a bit of a light bulb there as to what's going on. Yes. Yeah. 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 I can see that too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So introduction to a spirit group who are from the hells. This group wants to ask some questions about repentance and forgiveness. Hello. Hello. We want to know how how there will ever be an end to, to repentance. Why, why is it that you feel that um, there will be no end to repentance? Why do you feel that? It feels we are forever repenting and Paying for our sins. Mm -hmm. How can we ever make amends? We stay here, we know we're bad. Mm -hmm. We don't say, know what more we should do. Well, um, firstly, when you say you stay where you are, you know you're bad. Um, firstly, where are you? Do, you? do you know where you are? No. No? And when you say you know you're bad, how, how do you know you're bad? We know the terrible pain we felt when we came yeah. and it's still here with us. Yeah. Yeah. We know we did wrong. Yeah. We see some things that we did wrong. Good. 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 Do, how do, what do you feel about what you did wrong? Bad, so bad. Yeah, but have you cried about it? Loathing, self-loathing. Yeah, self-hatred is what you feel, isn't it? Yeah. Self-hatred actually prevents you from repentance. So you haven't actually been going through repentance yet. Self-hatred is like the expression of your guilt towards yourself and rage and anger towards yourself and yeah how do we pay for what we've done well you don't do it by being angry with yourself do you understand you, you've got to stop being angry with yourself in fact being angry with yourself prevents you from seeing what you did wrong right and also prevents you from seeing what others have done to you as well understand so at the oh. moment at the moment what's happening is that you're trying to be angry with yourself so you don't have to cry you actually feel sad but you you're, you're putting a layer over top of that of anger to stop yourself from feeling sad and that that's angry with yourself you're trying to attack yourself and punish yourself and that's not what God wants you to do at all I can't bear myself When you say you can't bear yourself, what you're really saying is that you can't bear your feelings. Mm, I can't bear them when you, whenever you talk and yeah. when you talk about the sadness, I can't bear it. I can't. Bear, I just want to. So you'd rather be angry. Scratch. Yeah, and you'd hurt. rather be angry with it, wouldn't you? Can you see that? And that's not repentance. So you know how you've been thinking you've been repenting? Yes, and when it will ever end? Well, it's, if you keep doing this, this will never end. While you do this, it's never going to end. Because this is not repentance. This is being angry with yourself. And being angry with yourself, from God's perspective, is just as bad as being angry with someone else. It's not good for you. It doesn't help you. Do you understand? 
So being not angry, really. being angry with yourself is not the answer, is what I'm saying. How do I be sorry? Well, firstly, you've got to stop being angry with yourself. So, so that's the first thing you've got to do. You've got to stop being angry with yourself. Okay. Stop punishing yourself. Now, there's a fast way to do stop that. So what I'd like to do is help you stop that. All right. So what we're going to do, and if you would be happy to do this with me, is we're going to ask God to tell you whether it's good for you to hurt yourself all the time. No. So what's God's feelings about it? So you can ask God, what, what do you feel about me hurting myself all the time, punishing myself and being angry with myself all the time? And let yourself feel what God feels about it. Oh, I can't. <sighs> you just need to let yourself feel what God feels about it to get the answer, though. And it doesn't matter if you cry or be upset, that's fine. But the key is to let yourself feel what God feels about it. I can't. You just breathe deep. Let yourself feel what God feels about it. He'll tell you what he feels about it. What does he feel about you hurting yourself and punishing yourself and being angry with yourself? Does he want you to do that? No, I know, no, but I can't feel. I can't feel more than no. And why can't you feel more than that? I don't know. It's because you're trying to shut down your feelings, right? Does that make sense to you? God, God's happy to share God's feelings with you as long as you're willing to feel them. Yes, I know. I can't do it. I feel you can do it. It's just that because of your other feelings, you don't want to do it. You don't want to cry, right? Because you know you're going to cry if you let yourself feel what God feels, right? Yeah. So the big problem that you actually have is you really just don't want to cry. No. Yeah. And that's why you feel the pain you have. It's far better to cry than feel the pain that you're in now. How can I do it? That's all right. Well, let, let's, uh, let's try another feeling, right? Another thing. What does God, ask God what God feels about feelings, about emotions. Does he feel they're good or bad? Good. Good, emotions are good. And some, and some emotions, what does he feel about anger? Anger, is that feeling an emotion or is it trying to stop a feeling of an emotion? Which one is it? Stopping. Yeah, so that anger is a, a trying to shut down the feeling of an emotion. So when you're angry with yourself, you're trying to shut down yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -mm. Now, does God want you to shut down yourself? No. No. Why is that? Can we find out why from God? Or is that you're not open to that emotionally? What's God saying to you about that? It's not good for me. It's not good for you. It's not how you've been made, is it? You not haven't been made to shut down your emotions. And if you shut down your emotions, you can't feel any good emotions either. So that's, that's important to understand. God wants me to be happy. Yeah. I don't know why God wants me to be happy. Does it matter why? That's all God wants, a bit for you to be happy. He doesn't want you to be unhappy all the time. He doesn't want you to be attacking yourself all the time. I don't deserve to be happy. Well, that's what you believe, but what does God feel? 
ask God what God feels. Do you deserve to be happy? That's what God says. Yeah, we do deserve to be happy. Right? So, the big mistake you've been making is thinking that punishing yourself is repenting. Do you understand? And punishing yourself isn't repenting. That's just being angry with yourself. And God doesn't want you to be angry with yourself. I feel like God wants me to be too nice to myself. <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes how it feels. Because you feel like harming yourself, right? And God doesn't want you to. So the hard thing you're going to find is you've got to stop harming yourself. And, and in fact, in some ways, you've got to be sorry for harming yourself, you see? Because God's it's saying, yeah, God's saying you shouldn't be doing this. This is, where, this is a big problem. From God's perspective, harming yourself is a sin. Does that make sense? It's something you do wrong that's against God's laws. He doesn't want you to harm yourself. He doesn't want you to harm other people either, of course. And he doesn't want you to harm yourself either. The answer to, you know, once you realise you've hurt other people, it's not a good thing to then hurt yourself. <laughs> God doesn't want you to do that. God wants you just to correct what went on to why you harmed others, you see. Can you see the difference? Yeah, see so what? I thought I was correcting myself. No, you're punishing yourself. You're, you're being like a, a really bad parent who belts its child, but you're belting yourself, right? You're building yourself up, aren't you? Yeah. Now, I've been through that. I know what that's like and the feeling of wanting to do that. But it's not good for you. And at some point, you've got to learn that that's not good for me. I've got to stop doing this. And So you changed it? Well, when I say I changed it, no, what I had to do is let myself cry about how I felt about myself. Does that make sense? Yes. And, and once I did that, I was able to feel what God feels about me. And once I could feel what God feels about me, then I didn't feel the need to punish myself all the time. And, and I also came to see that it was wrong and it was not, you know, it was not, it wasn't also, it wasn't helpful for change either. It didn't help me change. The reality is you can punish yourself for a long time and you never change while you're doing it because you, when you're punishing yourself, you're doing what, the opposite of, of repentance. You're just angry with yourself. Mm. And that's not being sorry about what you did. That's trying to punish you for what you did. And for most of us, we learn all that when we're on earth, you know, because our mum and dad, they usually punished us for things that we did wrong. They didn't correct us and they didn't lovingly correct us and they didn't show us the benefits of correction or any of those things. All they did was give us a big belt and, and, and we went on their way a lot of the times, right? So we learn after a while that that's what we should do. We should just really belt ourselves up when when we realize we've done something wrong that's not the answer though building yourself up for doing something wrong doesn't achieve anything all it does is keep us in this place of self-harm which is what has been happening for you that makes sense to you and what what i'd like to do is help you get out of a place of self-harm that sound all right to you it already feels better yeah yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some spirit friends of ours to come to you who have also had some self-harm too, right? So when they arrive, you let me know. Yes. And let them introduce themselves to you. Like you can feel from them they want to be kind with you, don't They're they? so kind. Yeah, yeah. They're not like you've been to yourself, are they? <laughs> They're not trying to hurt you or anything like that. They want to help you. Yeah? I can't understand. No, well, this is the trouble, you know. Sometimes we get hurt a lot, particularly when we're on Earth, and we get to this stage where we feel like the only way to proceed through life is to be angry with ourselves and force us into ourselves into doing things, you know. And after a while, we live like that, and that's the only way we live. And it's not the way to go. It's, uh, it's very, very self-destructive. And it's certainly not what God wants us to do. That, and that's different to repentance. So when you first came to me, you asked the question, is repentance ever over? Yes. The answer to that question is yes. Repentance will always get over if you do it properly. But what you've been doing is not repentance. 
Should we ask God about whether it is? Just to check. It's not. No, it's not. What, what have you been doing from God's perspective? Seeing myself. Yeah, hurting yourself. I've been doing it for such a long time. How long have you been doing that? Over a thousand years. Over a thousand years, yeah. When, where did you live when you were on earth? Can you remember? Scandinavia. Yeah. yeah. It's a long time to hurt yourself, isn't it? That's why you feel it's never over, you see. You've always wanted to hurt yourself that whole time. It's Sweden. I lived in Sweden. What, Sweden now? Yep. Yeah, that's a long Thank time. Thank you for your help. That's, a, that's my privilege. It's better already. It's already it's better already. You can feel that, you can see that hurting yourself is not the way forward here, right? And you can see that hurting yourself is not going to help you be repentant. It's not going to help you be sorry for anything you might have done wrong. All right? The pro problem with people who punish themselves all the time, usually they've had a lot done to them and, you know, you never see those things when you're hurting yourself all the time. Yeah. So, does God feel you need to live where you are? Where does God feel you need to live? I don't know. Would you like to ask him? Why not? You're worried that it would be worse. Mm. It's already a better place that I'm in now. Yeah. I don't want to ruin it. No, no, I know you don't want to ruin it. But let's ask God where he would like you to be, where he feels you're ready to be now. Shall we ask him that? Where does he feel you're ready to be? In a better place. Than you are even now, right? Yep. So what if we ask you new spirit friends, what are their names? Neil. Yeah. Let's ask Neil to take you to the place that God has already thought you should be in. Should we do that? And then you can tell me a little bit about it if you're not too overwhelmed by, by the whole thing. You're allowed to be there because God said you're allowed to be there, so you don't have to run away from it. Yeah, it's okay. It's pretty nice, huh? Compared to where you were. Yeah. yeah. Can you see that God feels better about you than you feel about you? Yeah. And the biggest problem that you've had is that you're not being willing to let what God feels about you be what you feel about you. Make yeah. sense? And you need to let yourself do that. And Neil's going to help you do that, right? But don't run away from the new place, will you? It's a nice place, isn't it? Much nicer. Don't run away from the place, eh? Because it's... It's a bit hard and makes me very sad. Yeah, because it's going to help you emotionally to feel your feelings. So that's a good, good thing. That's where God feels you need to be. So you need to trust God that that's where you need to be and be there. Make sense? And he will help you be there. And if you want to run away, then he'll hopefully a few times go and find you where you're gone, <laughs> get you to come back. <laughs> but he's not going to do that all the time, <laughs> is he? Yeah, if you want to be somewhere else, well, you're going to have to let yourself be somewhere else. But it's better if you listen to where God feels you need to be and just deal with whatever you feel. Yeah, Makes sense? I don't want to go. No, it's a nice place, a much nicer place. Eh? So... The question was, if, is repentance ever over? Yes, it is. But what you were doing wasn't repentance. What you were doing was punishing yourself and attacking yourself and hurting yourself. And that's not repentance. That makes sense? Yeah. And it's a good lesson to know. Thank you so much. Mm. What was your name? Tani. Tani? Uh, I'm glad we talked, Tani. 
Well, that's our conclusion to our day. Mary's uh, done a fair bit of exhausting channeling there, so we're going to leave it, uh, leave it for a moment now. But uh, hopefully you've learnt from that little discussion, those discussions that I've had, that uh, where the spirits have come and asked about forgiveness and repentance, that there are certain things that we often think are re forgiveness or repentance and they're not, and also that we can be easily fooled into believing that we are being repentant when we're not, and we've got to be very, very careful of the problems of self-attack and self-loathing because they do actually cause, cause us to not be repentant. And on the forgiveness side, sometimes we can search for forgiveness and from other people while at the same time be completely blind to what we need to be sorry for, mm -hmm. and which is something that we obviously also need to address. So hopefully through those uh, small ex examples of different spirits and what they're going through, You've, had, you've learnt some of the emotions that can interfere with the processes of forgiveness and repentance and also some of the underlying belief systems that people have that interfere with the process of forgiveness and repentance that they carry from the earth all the way through the spirit life and even right the way through to the sixth sphere of the spirit world. So hopefully you've learnt uh, some of those lessons from those particular spirits and I'd like to thank Mary for doing that channeling for us, even though she's quite tired today. Yeah, it's okay. Thanks, thanks for yeah. that, darling. Thank you, darling. Yeah, and I'm glad that we've been able to share with you a bit more information about how the processes of forgiveness and repentance affect you after you've passed in the spirit world. So thank you for your time, and we'll catch you another time.